So this is the new project, a Tiger One, vehicle number 212 of the uh, 502 Panzer Battalion. So I've got a few projects on the go. I've got the 8 Rad, Panzer II, the Panther II which I'm redoing, that little gray up there hiding in there, that one into there hiding there, but I just needed um, just to stop everything and uh, start something new. So we've got uh, dug through the stash, and I've got this early model uh, Tamiya Tiger One. It's a um, initial production, but it does give you enough bits and pieces to make a mid-war production, and uh, that's what I'm going to do. So reference-wise, I've got this Modeler's Guide uh, to the Tiger Tank. Excellent, excellent book. Not only does it give you a whole bunch of specific um, tanks, it also gives you the breakdown of all the production dates and the variants, which is really helpful. So um, I know that the one I'm building is going to be actually a spring of 43 version uh, with a few changes. Um, I know it's not going to be a fall of 43 version because by the fall of 43 they were adding Zimmerman and uh, the... Um, muzzle brakes, muzzle locks, or the barrel locks, which I'm not, which this one doesn't have. And um, of course the other piece of uh, of uh, reference I'm using is this um, Panzerkampfgrufen um, Strachwitz. Sorry, my German is atrocious, so I try not to. And um, basically uh, this book is a photographic study of the battles of Ost Ostak and uh, Westsak in uh, 1944, Narva 1994. And um, the kit I'm building, like I showed you earlier, is Tiger Tiger uh, 212. And uh, um, this is exactly what I'm going to do, the Tiger 212. Sorry, I guess a little bit of lens flare there. J.J. Abrams happening. Um, with an SU-76, uh, which I have one of those downstairs. I'm going to put this, basically, this scene right here. And um, the Tamiya kit actually is shows you how to build uh, tank 213. Of this same Panzer Battalion, so all I have to do is basically change out uh, decals, and boom, Bob's your uncle. I got two, two and two, so I'm kind of psyched about that. So this is what we're going to get going on. Um, it's going to be a long-term build. So this is uh, what April 25th, 2016. <laughs> we may not see this come. This this may not get posted for six, eight months. Who knows? But let's get at her. What an awesome kit. I just Every time I build it to me, I just have a smile on my face because usually it's just so friggin' awesome. So, uh, we've got the uh, suspension all done up on the uh, passenger side. And according to my... Oh, excuse me. Oh, yawning. It's 1230 at night. I need to get my ass to bed. Now, according to my references, uh, on the uh, driver's side of this uh, 212, uh, the out the outer three road rims front to back were left off so to me in their infinite wisdom I actually supplied two of these hubs so I'll cast the third one up in resin and I'll have uh, a master for the next time I build a tiger tank but wow 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 freaking awesome loving it I am such a glutton for punishment Love Tamiya, but their one-piece band-aid tracks, yeah, they don't cut it. And I had these downstairs in the basement for probably the last 10 years. Not wanting to do them. These aren't quite so bad, you know, you get a big, uh, you get five pins at a time and there's no left or right, so that's awesome. But you gotta put the track horns on. Yeah, wah, wah, wah. Oh, boy. Alright, let's get at her. Alright, two full days on these friggin' model casting tracks, we've got them all. Um, I don't know what the hell happened, but I'm like 22 track horn short. I had half a dozen, a dozen uh, links left, and shit, five full of the end connectors left. So I know I lost a few tra um, guide horns, but I didn't lose 22 of them. So, whatever. I just uh, left them off on the outside. They're a real pain in the ass to put in. And uh, one thing I've noticed that uh, 
model casting didn't give you left and right tracks they're all the same so you know that's all awesome but I'm looking at my instructions or in looking at my reference and now this is how they'll go on the tank like this and as you can see they're going to look different on the uh, these little ice cleats are going to be opposite you can see how on the one side the ice cleat goes this way and on the other one the ice cleat goes this way so looking at my um, references of Tiger Tanks the pictures clearly show that each one of these should be mirror image this is how they should look the uh, ice cleat should go in a distinct pattern a V down in each one whereas on this one as you can see the V is going to the top and I checked and it seems that I don't know Model cast and just kind of dick their tracks up by not having a left and right. I know it's you know it's minor. Oh well, geez, dude, your ice cleats aren't going the right way. Yeah, but you know it's just if I'm going to spend 55 bucks on a set of aftermarket tracks, um, you know, the cost of the kit, I friggin' want them right. So anyway, that's my bitch for both this part of it. Okay, we've got the uh, fender mounting bolts or studs um, glued onto the side. The turret is pretty much all done up, I'm right out of the box boys, the only thing I've added, I've got the lifting eyes to put on yet, and I've put a, I think it's a Voyager barrel, it was the least expensive barrel I could find online when I ordered, put this together uh, years ago. So, you know, it's not, it's not as crazy detailed as the Dragon stuff is, but for what I want, this to me is going to be plenty fine, it's coming right along. What an awesome, fun kit to build. You know what, in the whole build, at no point have I wanted to just pitch it out and go start something else. What a great kit. I love to me. Every time I build to me a kit, I got a smile on my face. You know what, it's not as super detailed as, say, a Dragon or some of the new Ming or the Tacom, but you know what, it's fun. It's enjoyable. And that's what this whole hobby should be all about is having fun and enjoying yourself while you're building it. So we've got the uh, turret primed in Duplicolor Primer Sealer. And I did that because of the uh, aluminum barrel. It's a Lion Roar barrel. And uh, I used that because it was affordable. And uh, I had, I've had this kit probably sitting for three years. Uh, waiting to get built and I just like, you know what? I need to build some Tamiya. And uh, that's what I've got queued up for about my next three builds is all to me. I've got one uh, mini art to kick in. The mini art's going to actually go with this. And uh, I'm pretty psyched about it. So basically all I've got left to do is uh, drill out these ends, clean them up, uh, put on the uh, wire, the tow wire, the tow, um, tow cables. And we'll get it going. Any of the brass parts here that you can see. I had from, uh, I've got two uh, Dragon Late Tigers, and I just uh, stole some photo etch from that. I will have to replace it eventually once uh, once I get at it. I've added some, uh, added some cables there for the uh, Bosch lights. I've left the lights off according to my uh, references. This particular tank, uh, 212, did not run the... Uh, did not run any uh, lights. It did not have the right rear uh, exhaust or um, flame smoke discharge, but the rest of the smoke discharges were there. Nor did it run a middle smoke discharge, but the front front smoke discharges were there. So to me, it actually does a really good job. I thought I'd have to uh, do some different. Uh, I'll pull some stuff out of uh, Dragon, but I didn't have to. <coughs> the uh, top of the turret isn't as well detailed as the Dragon, but put it this in in uh, in uh, reference that uh, this is a forty-three dollar kit, and the Dragon is close to ninety dollars. Now. 
the $90 Dragon Kit also does include link to link tracks. Whereas if I want to add link to link tracks to this $54 Tiger Tank, I will have to spend about $50 or more on model cast and or frill model to replace those tracks. So keep that in mind. Just because the Tamiya off the top is cheaper, it doesn't mean in the long run that it's going to be a better value. Sometimes if you pay a little bit more right at the start, it will end up to work out better for you. Now $100 for the Dragon Kit, that includes a metal barrel and link to link tracks. You will spend that on the Tamiya kit and maybe not have as much detail but you know what you're probably going to have a little bit more fun building it. So this puppy is just about ready for paint. Next time you're going to see it it will be in black Vallejo primer. I know Vallejo primer if you reference my I mm, bleeping hate Vallejo primers I've had a bit of change of heart towards them. I don't love them, but I don't use them as a primer. I use them as a pre-shade or a pre-color. If you want a primer, you need to use a good enamel primer like this Duplicolor Primer Sealer that can be sanded out and it can be used to show flaws and then you can fix them. Keep in mind that Vallejo Air Quotes Primer is strictly and simply a pre-shade color, nothing more. If you want to run a color before and find all the flaws, run a good quality enamel primer. In this case, this is Duplicolor Primer Sealer. You can also use Duplicolor Primer Filler, which is I use because it's cheap, available. I can run down to my local Canadian tire store and boom. Seven, eight bucks, I got a can versus, what is it, $18 for a can of Tamiya primer that gives me one quarter of the amount. So anyway, like I say, boys and girls, I think I've got a few lady, a uh, few female subscribers out there. Next time you see this, she's going to be all black and ready for some paint. Later, guys. All right, my Tiger 212 is coming right along. We uh, we did it with uh, Tamiya Dark Armor Yellow lightened up and did a little bit of hairspray technique on it and with Tamiya White. I didn't beat it up a whole lot because looking at my reference picture here, uh, you can see, trying to get the lens flare off of it, that the white is pretty pronounced. Now you'll say, dude, you forgot half the model to paint the white, but look, as you can see here, there's a definite difference between the dark armor yellow and the white. So, three quarters, only three quarters of the tank was actually painted in uh, in white. Oops, sorry guys. And uh, we've got another shot here of it. I'll just find it uh, right here. You can really see how the turret is done up in white and it looks like the whole back end of the tank wasn't painted at all. So that's the guide I went with in, uh, in painting this and leaving this entire back piece of the, uh, of the tank of the Tiger unpainted. And very little and no paint whatsoever in the running gear. It's hard to see whether it was, the running gear was whited out because it's so dirty. So uh, I'm just going to throw some uh, decals on here and let it cure out for the night. Uh, gloss over the decals and then start uh, weathering. So I found some Dragon um, decals for this uh, Tiger Tank 212. And that took six number twos and I couldn't find any solid black six number twos, uh, six of them. So I use these, so what I'm going to do is just go ahead and fill them in with some Vallejo Black. Um, not a lot of markings on this particular Tiger 212. But uh, typical nice dragon decals, they snuggled right down with some uh, Mark Softer. And uh, we'll uh, get on them here. Right, Chicken Louie, and get them painted up. Alright, pretty good. We did a really light hairspray 
scrub on the white. Uh, I want to keep it very subtle because yeah, the pictures show very subtle, not a lot of big heavy chipping. So we've done that. We did the barrel was wore off fairly well, so we did scrub the barrel off pretty heavy. But for the most part, we did not do a lot of really heavy scrubbing of the uh, of the whitewash. It almost looked like uh, this original tank 202 212 was um, repainted at the depot because the paint it looks pretty smooth and pretty well applied. So what we did, um, we used the MIG dark wash for all the, the dark armor yellow and the running gear. I used the heavier dark wash in the running gear because the running gear is pretty rough looking. And um, we used the neutral wash on the white. And with the neutral wash, I uh, used it with a fine Tamiya brush and we just put it on almost dry brushing using the, the MIG neutral wash. We just put it on like that, let it set for a few minutes and then came over and just kind of uh, very very gently brushed it down with this uh, large number 8 uh, synthetic brush. And then we added just a tiny little bit of uh, of the rust streaks, the AK rust streaks, that was kept to a very minimal because it doesn't look like there's a lot of rust streaks and then we used the uh, AK winter streaking grime especially over on this side where the um, video or the, the photographs of this tank show a lot of very dark streaking on the white so that's about it for weathering on this one I, I kinda like it basically just a wash um, a light pin wash and then some of the streaking grime on the sides we still have to hit the running gear and the tracks with some pigments but for the uh, tank itself I think we're gonna call it good for being weathered